Blue shrimp, salmon tacos, fiery drinks, cheese in a cloud. We're eating at the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. Safe passage, everyone. I am aboard the Galactic Star Cruiser, the Halcyon ship. We're back with another episode. This time, it's all about the food, baby. There are over a hundred new exclusive eats and drinks aboard this ship, and you know I'm eating every single one of them. This is gonna be a marathon of eating, but let's get to it. There are several places to dine aboard the Halcyon. There's the Crown of Corellia dining room, which is where you will have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There is the Sublight Lounge, which is the lounge with bar food, as well as signature cocktails. And there's a little snack bar you can grab some grab-and-go munchies. This video is a combination of the media cruise where I was a guest of Disney, as well as the inaugural cruise, which we paid for. So I am bringing you all the info on the Eats and Treats and the best things to dine on in the galaxy far, far away. I, I am so excited excited. I love the way the lunch works. It's like these cool trays that have little geometric spots and then you can see all the food is perfectly portioned and then you just fill up your little tray and it kind of fits like a big Tetris puzzle. You can have as much or as little as you'd like. I'm just obsessed with these trays and the little like Jenga situation, Tetris situation. Again, it's all you care to enjoy so get as much or as little as you'd like and the chefs are great. The cast is great so if you wanted this salad but you don't like Parmesan, you could ask them and they will make you one without the Parmesan crisp. This is like a cruise ship, so if you have an allergy, if you have a special diet, or even just a preference, ask them and they can make it happen. This is one of the most exciting things on board, one of the things highly anticipated. This is the fire takeaway and red fruit soup dipper. That's a grilled cheese bubble waffle and tomato soup. This is like peak Galactic Star Cruiser food, in my opinion, because it's very familiar, simple flavors, but done in a very unusual, fun way. A plus, Molly's best of the ship I guess we'll call it this this time. This is the sorghum stew and it's a crawfish in gumbo and has a little crostini thing. As you may know I notoriously don't do well with crawfish but lucky for me my companion on this voyage Megan is from New Orleans so she's gonna tell me how to eat it and see if I do better. Have you ever like kind of peeled a shrimp? It's yeah. a little bit like that so you want to kind of like break Break the side. There's so much juice coming out of my <laughs> little friend here. It's good, right? It's better than the one I had at Universal, but it's gonna be a no from me. But at least I did it correctly now. There's also a pork and cheese takeaway with spice seasoned spread. That looks amazing. That's amazing. The bread itself tastes like the Brazilian cheese bread that you can get at Epcot festivals or at Skipper Canteen, where it's that like flourless tapioca, cheesy bread, and then there's ham on it. And wow, that might be my favorite thing I've had here, even more than the grilled cheese. Then we have a sunflower butter and jelly, so it's like a peanut butter and jelly little poof thing. Fabulous, space peanut butter and jelly is delish. Sun butter, a little pop of fruit from the, from the jelly. And the outer side is like a little bit crusty, almost. It's like a flakier pastry, but then it's got this little bit of matcha, but you're not tasting a lot of matcha. Mostly just tasting the sun butter and the jelly. That's awesome. This is the plant-based mousse. It definitely has a chocolatey flavor. It also has a hint of that hibiscus, a little bit of that um, kind of fruity flavor, and then the matcha flavor. It's fine, not my fave. And there's also a blue bantha milk fruit whip, which means it's a dessert made out of blue milk. Very fruity, very light. Definitely taste the blue milk. I like this better than blue milk though, but that's really fun that they did a blue milk dessert. A green leaf salad. Space salad is fresh. It's crispy, great produce. Love the Parmesan crisps. Tangy dressing, that's nice. This is a yellow curry tip yip salad inside a little bun, AKA chicken salad. I really love curry and it's definitely got a strong curry flavor, but it's chilled and it's definitely like mayonnaise based, like how the chicken salad is. Almost reminds me of an egg salad, but if you like curry and you like chicken salad, the bread is not as fluffy as I thought it would be, but it's very good. And it's nice to get something like cold amongst all the warm, savory food. This is the Shandrillin sal- San- Shandrillin? Shandrillin. Shandrillin. Shandrillin <laughs> salad. It's got some couscous, it's got zucchini, it's got mushrooms, it's got kale. Another lighter option. I really like that aboard the ship, they have a very good blend of like, here's a grilled cheese and tomato soup, but here's a salad. Here's chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese, but here's vegetables. Like they have a good mix of all kinds of culinary delight. Okay, that dressing is awesome. Super olive oily, light, 
fresh. All that produce is really fresh. Obviously, I like mushrooms, so I like it with the mushrooms. And there's some citrus in there too. That's a great salad if you want something a little pop of, pop of green. Here is today's daily sweet bread, which are cookies. These ones are an ube crinkle cookie. They're called amethyst cookies on board, but they're just a crinkle cookie and they're sweetened by ube, which is a naturally purple, like potato-like substance plant, vegetable. I love cookies, as you probably know. They're just slightly sweet because of that ube, but they're really good texture, nice and moist. A plus. I would say the one place the Halcyon really struggles is dessert, because I don't love mousse and jelly consistency, and that's what a lot of their dessert is, but these cookies are a tippy of chicken with paneer cheese, little flatbread. Space pizza is delicious. A little bit of masala flavor, Indian flavors, big paneer cheese chunks. Yes, please. We have the nori crusted redfish with mushrooms and cabbage. Ooh, that actually is great flavor. I don't even love seafood as portrayed by the crawfish. That's a nice light buttery flavor. This rice is amazing. It's got a little stickiness. If you're a fish fan, I think you'd be lovely surprised. It's not super fishy at all. It's flaky. It's like salmon, but it's not. But it reminds me of salmon. Wow. This is the flora. This is one of their plant-based items, but it does look like it has a nice little sauce going on, a little crumble action. Ooh, the peppers are really good. They're just roasted vegetables, but they've got a lot of good flavor. If you are plant-based, delish. If you're not plant-based, but just want a vegetable, also not bad. So well executed simple dish. This is basically chicken nuggets and mac and cheese, but on the Halcyon, it's called Tip Yip and Noodle Cheese. I will say the noodles have changed already, which is interesting. Uh, previously, they were like spaghetti noodles, and now they're these little trumpety ones. It's really good. It's just chicken nuggets and mac and cheese, but it's really good cheesy sauce. And I like the breading on the chicken nuggets. I like it more than just regular Disney chicken nuggets. This is definitely your kid, what's aimed for your kid, but no one's gonna stop you from eating it too. One highlight for some is that blue and green milk are on tap, all you care to enjoy during breakfast and lunch buffets when they're open. And then during dinner, if you ask your server, they'll bring it to you. And if you're up at the lounge, they can get it as well. I would like to point out that unlike in the park, the frozen consistency, not happening. It's the same recipe. It's still the plant-based coconut rice milk base. Um, again, this one's more citrusy. This one's more tropical, but it's like milk consistency now. I gotta say, I like them both. I do I like blue milk now? Here in the Sublight Lounge, this is where you can play sabak. This is where you can get those handcrafted cocktails. This is also where they have some fun light bites. Taking a look at the cocktail menu, they've got a wide variety, much different than Oga's. You're not seeing repeat drinks on here. All made to order as opposed to the pre-made ones there. And then they also have some specialty non-alcoholic beverages, beers on tap. Those are those specialty beverages that you can get in Galaxy's Ed brewed just for Batu and the Halcyon. Wines on tap as well as some sparkling wines. Good array and as a reminder, Alcoholic beverages, specialty beverages are not included with your Star Cruiser booking. For now, the specialty cocktails you can get at the Sublight Lounge. You can get them at dinner, at lunch, breakfast, go crazy. But before we go in and start eating and drinking, let's look at the Halcyon Fluke. This is the wine bottle that Trajapur, the very short founder of this ship, tried to smash over it as a symbol of welcome to a ship as you do. It didn't break. He stepped back furiously, then a pipe fell, and it would have crushed him had he not stepped back. So he feels like this bottle not breaking actually was a sign of good luck. It's almost 300 years old, and it said if you rub it before a sabak game, you'll get good luck. So I told the cast members I was gonna lick it, see if that helps. What I love about the menu is that on certain drinks, they've written what it is on earth. So that way, if you're like, I like old fashioned or I like gimlets, like you know what you're drinking. It's just the space version. This is the Silver Sea Martini. It's gin, lemon, mint, ginger, and passion fruit. And if you look at it closely, it's absolutely stunning. It's a layered drink. It's two different layers. There's a purple and a pink, and it is so glittery. I'm obsessed with it. And this cool looking one is the Clown of Bespin. It's rum, lemon, orgia, which is almond passion fruit, and a plenarum lemon foam. This is the Fiery Mustafarian. That test tube right there is lava extract, which is like a spicy chili juice and then it's anejo tequila mezcal stone fruit lime chili again that's in your test tube and black salt this is a souvenir cup that you get to take home cheers to space Ooh, that does have a kick i love it 
it's kind of a hard cup to drink out of. Yeah. Um, it tastes like a spicy margarita. That's what you'd call this on Earth with mezcal because it's definitely got that smoky flavor. The more of that tube of lava you put in, the spicier it gets. And I poured the whole thing in there because you know I don't like sweet drinks. So it really is more smoky um, with a little bit of spice. And then there's definitely a fruity aftertaste, but it's not overwhelming. I really like that. If you're in mezcal or a margarita drinker, give this one a whirl. This one is the Dagobah Vimlet. So it's like a gimlet, but it's a vimlet. You get it also in a very cool souvenir cup. It reminds me of the ones from Solo. This is vodka, orange liqueur, lime, and peppercorn. So very unique flavor. And Dagobah is the, is the swamp where Yoda is. So it makes sense that it's green and kind of looks swampy. I wonder if it'll taste swampy. It kind of tastes swampy. Definitely earthiness from the peppercorn, a little bit of sweetness in there. It's not super sweet though. What I have to say I love about these cocktails versus the cocktails on Galaxy's Edge is all of those are super sickly sweet, taste like a bachelorette party, but these are actually handcrafted, made to order, and they taste refreshing and delicious. This is the Nicillian and Bubbles, and it is basically a gin and tonic. So it's gin, cucumber, lime, and thyme. Bubbles! Ooh! And it's still earthy and definitely has that gin piney taste, but I love the cucumber. It's very refreshing, not sweet at all. If you're looking for a light, refreshing, not sweet drink, this is great. This is the Hoth Icebreaker, named of course after the planet of Hoth, but it's basically a lemon drop. It's vodka, lemon, pure cane sugar, a vanilla lemon foam, and then there's this beautiful Hoth Ice Crystal on top. Cheers to Hoth. Let's hope this is more appetizing than when the abominable snowman eats Luke's Tauntaun. Oh, yeah, it tastes like a lemon drop. It tastes like a sweeter lemon drop. I would more say it tastes like a boozy lemonade. When I think of lemon drop, I think of martini, where the strongest flavor is alcohol. Here, the strongest flavor is lemon and a tartness, but it's really nice. I love lemon as a flavor. It's very cool and refreshing. I would definitely drink that one again. These are the Mustafar tuber chips. So they're house-made potato chips. They're dusted with sriracha and charcoal vinegar, and then they have a spicy aioli here. These are plant-based. These are like the best salt and vinegar chips you'll ever have. They're kettle cooked house made chips. There is some spicy sriracha crumbly and vinegar on them, plus the sriracha aioli. These are definitely the hottest things I've had at the bar, and they are awesome. If you like sriracha, if you like spice, get these chips. They are A plus. We also have another plant based dish here. These are the crispy dried green beans. So they're just crispy green beans with a creamy green pearberry sauce. Yum. And these are really good. Crispy green beans, they remind me of the wok fried green beans in Trader Sam's in Disneyland. They're not quite that good, but they're nice, crispy, and crunchy. And it is a vegetable technically, so, you know. These are smoked redfish little tubes with Felician garden leaf and redfish roe. So they're basically little salmon cannoli things with little, like, caviar bites. Oh, wait. I like it. I actually really like that. It's like super creamy, little salty, smoky, salmon spread, probably cream cheese based inside this like nice crispy shell. Color me shocked. I did not expect to like a creamed fish dip taco, but anything's possible in space. And if you're afraid of something like me, just order it because it's all included. So you might as well try it and you might find a new favorite little munchie. Another cocktail here at the lounge. This is Drag Boar's Delight. It's basically a Negroni, uh, gin, vermouth, bitter and sweet. It's a Negroni. Yeah, that's a Negroni. It's got that really bitter taste from the vermouth. If you don't like vermouth, if you don't like that flavor, this would be a no for you. It's fine. It's definitely towards the bottom of my list uh, when it comes to these drinks. It's just a, an expensive space negroni. Also digging into the little flatbread. This is a pepperoni and herb vinegar sauce flatbread. It's got some cheese, pepperonis, chimichurri sauce, some little blistered tomatoes on there. And let me tell you what, they do flatbread right on this ship. So I'm excited to try the lounge flatbread. Disney World Quick Service Restaurant should take a lesson from the Halcyon because they do the little pizzas so well. I did I did hear from the chef that they have a pizza oven on the ship, a wood fire pizza oven, and that's what's doing it. The crust is perfect. There's a little bit of heat from that. The sauce on there, nice pepperoni. So this is a good one for a little bit pickier eaters. And again, everything's made to order. So if you don't want the chimichurri sauce or something, you could ask for just like a pepperoni pizza, and I'm sure they would make it happen. This is the Mark of the Huntress. It's bourbon, peach infused black currant, um, almond syrup, lemon, and sparkling bubbles. Bubbles. 
Okay, that's definitely bourbon, but it's also definitely peach. Molly, which one but the reason that this drink is so cool is because the story behind it is that this is what often folks like bounty hunters would order in a bar, and it's a signal to everyone else there that they have seen their mark and they are the hunter. So if you see someone drinking this in a cantina, do not go talk to them. Don't distract them because their eye is on the target. Smoked cheese in cloche, which is three different cheese balls and it comes in a smoky cloud. This was one of my favorite things to eat on the entire ship. Make sure if you order this, you order yourself those chips as well so you can do like a mix and match situation. My favorite was that jalapeno bacon, but three different cheese balls, A plus. If you're a cheese eater, absolutely order this if you're on board. Thomas and quinoa meatballs, which are not meat. They are a plant-based option with chickpea bites. I wish they had a little bit more spice to them, but they were a good good falafel, good consistency. I'm having the Mandalore Sling, which is chilled bourbon, vermouth, and a Luxardo cherry. It's their version of a Manhattan. Obviously, I'm having this. Cheers. Woo. Okay, that's definitely the most booze forward of the drinks, even more so than the old fashioned. There's no sweetness at all. It's mostly just tastes like bourbon with a little bit of hint of that vermouth. I like it because I like bourbon drinks and I like not sweet drinks, but if you're used to something a little fruitier or a little bit more mixed, this is probably not gonna be the drink for you, but if you're looking for like a drink, this will work for you just fine. I also do wanna note that they do have earth drinks on board, which means they've got different spirits and mixers. So if you want like a vodka soda or a Jack and Coke, they can do that. They also have a lot of the beers that you can get on Galaxy's Edge exclusive, those craft beers that I love. They have several of those on board as well as a wide variety of wines. The little snack bites. This is basically a delicious snack mix that they bring out when you come to the table. It's always good to have a bar mix. Nothing too unusual about it, but it was welcomed. Now, before we leave the Sublight Lounge, there's a few mocktails we have to talk about as well. These are also an additional cost and they are available all day long, both here and in the dining room. However, as a pro tip, if you take the mocktail mixing class on day two, you get to make them all and sample them all for free, which is exactly what we did. The first is the Blue Milk Citrus Fizz. It's made with lychee, blue milk sorbet, lemon lime soda, and lime. It tastes like sweet blue milk soda, which is flavors. The best way to describe this is that it tastes like sweeter than regular blue milk plus soda. The next one is the Muha Twist, which is watermelon, an herbal garden blend, mint, and sparkling bubbles. This was a little bit tart, a little bit grapefruity, it was our favorite of the three, but not something we would choose to order again. And lastly, the Yodora Poison Spitter Drop. Now what's cool about this is the poison spitting plant is actually on the ship as well. This one's got limeade and an uzu. It's kind of earthy and green tasting, but if you're into those kind of flavors, it's not too bad. Overall, the mocktails were a miss for us as adults who could order real cocktails, and it seems like your kids will be happier with just classic blue milk, but go ahead and try them if they sound interesting to you. This is my new crewmate friend, Keely. She's from Batu. Born and raised. And I gotta say, Keely, the drinks on here are better than the drinks on your home planet. <gasps> Don't tell the people at home. I will never tell them. Just like breakfast and lunch, dinner is served in the Crown of Corellia dining room, but look how this room has transformed by dimming the lights, by bringing in kind of the mood lighting. It feels like a different space. It makes it feel much more elevated and fancy, and I cannot wait for intergalactic superstar Gaia to perform, and that's what happens during this meal is you are treated to a performance, and let me tell you what, she crushes. Now, at dinner, it is served family style. Think like Ohana, so anything that you see on the menu, you will be getting to your table, and like Ohana or any other family style restaurant, you can order as much as you'd like. If something's really tickling you, go ahead and order more. You all know that if there is an old fashioned in space, I would find it. And I found it. It's called the Pod Chaser. It's on the dinner specialty cocktails menu. It's bourbon bitters and orange zest. And then it has this really cool metallic chilled sphere in there. And the glass was all icy when they handed it to me. So I'm excited to try a space old fashioned. Space old fashioned, space old fashioned. Old fashions are delicious in space. They're not super duper strong. There's definitely still a booze feeling in the mouth. This is definitely the least sweet drink I've had on board so far, unless you count a glass of champagne or a glass of red wine, um, which they provided with us at the Captain's Toast. Small pours, but this is a great old fashioned. It's definitely got the hints of sweet. Oh, thank you, Brian, sorry. <laughs> the service here, side note, unbelievable. It's been amazing. It's like going on Disney Cruise Line where you think Disney service is good in a park, and then you go on the cruise line and it's like here, this is like space 
the service is very good. Um, but this is a very delicious old fashioned. It's definitely got that booze little hitness at the beginning, but it's not super duper strong. Orange bitters on the back end. This is a great cocktail. I hope they serve this other places on board because this might be my space drink, which is shocking to no one. This right here is one of my favorite eats aboard the Halcyon. This is the spiral dumplings, the bento experience. So the purple one is the bantha beef, which is teriyaki beef inside there. The beef one's so good. The beef is teriyaki beef. It's a nice sweet marinade on there. I like dipping that one in the spicy sauce to give it a little bit of balance and texture, but I just love this one because the entire thing is a CYO tail. The orange one is tippy of chicken. It's sweet and sour chicken. The chicken one, a little bit sweeter it's just sweet and spicy or sweet and sour chicken i love these because the bow is cooked really nicely as is the meat and the green one is floor vegetables with potato and curry lots of flavor Ooh, a little bit of heat and spice and again there's a create your own adventure tale with these dipping sauces as well it comes with this noodle salad and those four accoutrement sauces so it's again a mix and match situation they're already cut in half when they're served but if you'd like another one of any particular flavor go ahead and ask so this is a cool thing they gave you in space and i'm going to try these noodles which I don't actually think they're noodles. I believe them to just be spirally vegetables like carrots. But they're good and they have a lot of flavor. And mixed in with the bao, they're a good contrast. Lots of crunch. I do want to point out that this noodle salad is plant-based. And then the green one is a curry and vegetable and potato, so there's no meat in that one either. Okay, Guy was rocking and rolling during the main course, so I didn't wanna try and film over her and enjoy the show, but let's go over the delicious bites. The Bantha beef was definitely my favorite, and this is my preferred cut of beef on the ship. Spoiler alert, I like it more than the dinner date too. It's just a really good beef tenderloin, nice and moist and tender, perfectly cooked steak, came with some delicious mashed potatoes, A plus, my favorite thing during this main course. The chicken is a bourbon glazed chicken with red peppers and sesame seeds. It reminds me of an upscale version of something you'd get at a Chinese restaurant, Asian style, lightly fried chicken. I found it very delicious, but not as good as the steak. The stewed shrimp is made with lemongrass, lobster cream, and a coconut lime foam. I didn't expect to like this as much as I did because I don't love all seafood, but I loved the creamy savory cream and I was a big fan of this. This is an underrated hit of the main course. I wish it was a little coconuttier though. The rice is simple, just rice, cilantro rice. If you don't like cilantro, this one's probably not gonna be for you, but it did remind me of the rice you get at Chipotle. And lastly, the floor which is basically vegetables. They had harissa spice. They were basically just well-spiced vegetables. Nothing too fancy or exciting about them, but if you're looking for something a little healthier, these won't disappoint you. And keep in mind, if you are a plant-based eater, they have plant-based entrees not shown here that you can request. This is your dessert for night one. This is the Yogan Fruit and Caramel Whip. So it's got Uzu, Passion Fruit, and Cardelia Jelly. So it's a mousse-based dessert as basically all the desserts in space are. I don't know why space food is just mousse-based for dessert. That one's like between a mousse and a... What is it? It's like a whipped mousse. It's a whipped yeah. mousse. And it's mostly passion fruit, which is not my favorite flavor, which is probably part of the reason I'm not loving this. The caramel one's good. There's a third component of this dish, and it's this little, like, gelatinous orb. Oh. It's, like, citrusy, but savory. This dessert is going to be not on the not for Molly list. I don't like passion fruit, and I don't love mousse-based desserts. Those at my table who do like passion fruit are enjoying the passion fruit mousse more. But don't forget, you can order cookies too. Here is one of the kids' desserts. This is the warm milk and cookies, and you can choose from plain milk, white earth milk, basically, green milk or blue milk, and it comes in a little thing, and then there's three brown butter cookies, but those are chocolate chip cookies here in space, and the kids' dessert is very cute. I made a mistake. I'm big enough to admit that. You should not dip cookies in blue milk. You should consume them separately. Or get earth milk. And don't forget, you can order off the kids' meal as well, or they can do a salad, they can do rice paper rolls, then they've got tippy up chicken sorts, which is just grilled chicken. They have a cheeseburger pod, most important thing on the menu, chicken tenders, a cheese pizza, and then they've got sides like noodles, green beans, fries, and then they have some desserts as well, including warm cookies and milk if they're not feeling up to having the caramel quit. It's not morning yet. Why? Grogu, tell them. Because we didn't eat the snacks from the snack bar yet. So now introducing a new segment I call bedtime snacks. And considering these were still being handed out when the Sublight Lounge closed down around 1 a.m., I'd say that's the point of them. So let's see what we got here. We got some Parmesan crisps. We have some cornbread sticks. 
This is a Rice Krispie Raspberry, Raspberry Rice Krispie Treat, a Triple Chocolate Cookie, a Santrilla Starline Cookie, and a Cake Pop. Let's give them a whirl. The cheese crisps taste exactly like Parmesan cheese. They're delicious. They're just literally cheese. Like you know when you buy wisps to put on top of your salad? That's what this is. Cornbread stick. Mmm, slightly sweet, crispity crunchy. A plus. So, an artificially flavored Rice Krispie Treat. Yeah, that's exactly what it tastes like. I like Rice Krispie Treat, so it's not terrible. The artificial flavor is not super strong, but that's all it is. The ingredients say it's just dried raspberries, and I believe it. It doesn't taste super sickly sweet. Next up, the triple chocolate chip cookie, and it looks like it's got a little sea salt on there, which I like. Mmm. It's a very good cookie. Sea salt, it's great. It's very chocolatey, very moist cookie, with a little bit of crispness, because it's thin. I'm shocked how good these snacks are from being packaged at a snack bar. This one is called the Star Cruiser Pill Cookie because it's shaped like a pill, and it looks like it's just gonna be a generic sugar cookie with that classic kind of like sturdy icing. That's exactly what it is. It's fine. The chocolate chip cookie is actually good. This is meh. There's too much like of this hard, not frosting coating on the top, but I mean, your kids will probably like it. It's just a cookie, but the chocolate chip one's really good and this is not. And last but not least, the Galaxy Cake Pop. It's a pretty good chocolate cake pop. Not uh, quite as moist as some of the ones you'll get like in the Disney bakery cases, but not bad, kind of thicker purple frosting around it. I think kids will really like this one. If you need something chocolate, this is your best bet off the snack bar, but snack bar is mostly just to have grab and go munchies to bring back to your room, give your kids something, especially with that goldfish and trail mix. Now I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Rise and shine, it's that two day. It's very early in the morning. And it's a breakfast. Here is a look at the breakfast. I've been told by many people that breakfast is the best meal or a surprise hit, so don't sleep on breakfast. There's also grab and go breakfast if you don't wanna come have a full sit down situation, but lots of variety, lots of plant-based options. Looks good. Guess what, friends? This happens even in space. You know, it's amazing that they got the same recipe as Mickey Mouse's waffles all the way here in space, right? It's Mickey waffles, but space version. They taste great. Good sausage, low bit heat, maple flavor, probably from the me pouring syrup all over it. And a nice little, I love the little folded egg, a little cheese in there. This is like the kid's plate, but obviously anyone can grab it. And it's nice to get like a little of everything all on one little plate. Simple breakfast, so far so good. This is plant-based kale porridge with sausage, quote, gravy, and an egg. <laughs> okay, I think it's a texture thing for me. The kale porridge is like spongy kind of, um, and on no planet in the galaxy are those actually eggs, but they are little, they're kind of crispy, which is nice. So I think that's a good savory dish if you are a plant-based eater, but for me, that's gonna be a no dog. Pastries. This one's a blueberry muffin, I think. Yes, a space blueberry muffin. Delish. Next pastry. Oh, this one's like a croissant with some fruit jelly on the top. Delish. And then this one's like just bread, but it's got a little sugar crumble on top. It's like a little sweet roll. So pastry plate, very nice. Nothing crazy flavor-wise, but very fun presentation. This is also plant-based. It's whole grain pear berry toast. There's definitely avocado. It's like avocado toast. The bread's kind of flimsy, is my only critique. It's not really holding up to the avocado spread. And then, yeah, it's got some acidity and brightness from the fruit. That's actually pretty good. I like that one. Ooh, there's some lemon? Yeah, that is good. This is the thing I'm most excited about. It's the egg with bacon and potato. Oh, baby. That's awesome. Mm. That's the breakfast winner. Holy moly, I love hash browns, especially shredded hash browns with like the crispiness and that's what's going on. It's beautiful hash brown cake and then this fluffy cheesy egg on top, a little crispy smoky bacon. Not wild flavors at all, very familiar breakfast flavors, but very fun presentation, Mwah. chef's kiss. Next up, compressed fruit, which looks just like melon, but I will let you know if it tastes different than just watermelon. It tastes like watermelon. It's literally, it's watermelon, guys. Coming closer. It's just free. 
Oh, it's nice. It's refreshing. It's good on a breakfast buffet when all I want to eat are waffles and that cheesy bacon thing. It's good to have fruit too, you know? Blue yogurt coming at ya. Palm fruit yogurt acai. My least favorite thing I've eaten on this voyage, and that says a lot because I also just ate fake egg. It is um, real milk yogurt, but it tastes tangy, almost like it's turned. <laughs> and it's not my favorite. I don't love yogurt to begin with, but um, the granola was nice, the fresh fruit on it was nice, but the yogurt itself is not for me. It's probably the worst thing I've eaten on this whole thing. So. Yeah. Stay tuned if blue shrimp tops it. Clo cloud waffle. Whipped, whipped, no. whipped egg. Doesn't have a ton of flavor. I thought it would be spicier. I think this is spicy. Yeah, it tastes like, you know when you eat a breakfast sandwich from a fast food restaurant and they have the egg patty thing on there? That's what it tastes like, but an egg white. Also enjoying the Bloody Rancor. This is kind of the exclusive breakfast drink. They also do an espresso martini and mimosas, but this is the kind of fancy breakfast drink. And it's a Bloody Mary made with vodka, golden tomato juice, and carbonite dipped Bloody Rancor cubes. That's what those are. I know you thought it was watermelon, but no, it's Bloody Rancor. And by that, I mean it's red fruit. And by that, I mean it's tomato juice cubes. So they'll kind of melt down into the Bloody Mary, enhancing the tomato-y flavor. It's a fine Bloody Mary. It has a little bit of kick. I'm gonna see if there's hot sauce in space, actually. And I like the concept of these kind of tomato ice cubes adding flavor to it, but it's not overwhelming me flavor-wise is anything that unique or special, but if you like Bloody Marys in the morning, it'll do. Breakfast is done, getting ready to go um, on the transport to back two. Highlights for breakfast, number one, favorite thing is that crispy tuber with the potato and the bacon and the egg. That was chef's kiss, awesome. Obviously, you can never go wrong with a waffle when you're eating in Walt Disney World, which, by the way, we're still in Walt Disney World. I completely forgot. I literally feels like you're somewhere else when you're here. Um, the fruit is great because it's just nice, fresh fruit. Pastries were great. Breakfast was awesome. Don't sleep on breakfast. Breakfast has been awesome, so make sure you get up. There's a grab and go as well, if you'd like to just do that before you go on your excursion, but breakfast was great, so make the time to get here. All right, let's check out the lunch buffet. To start, we have Bantha vinegared herb sauce, Koti cheese pizza, so some kind of beef pizza, and it looks like pesto. Space pizza, space pizza. Base pizza is delicious. <laughs> Definitely pesto, some roasted red peppers on there, lots of cheese, nice crust. Tastes like a focaccia crust. Space knows how to make pizza. They should tell the people at Pizza Rizzo. We have a burrata, red fruit salad with basalme. That translates to a compresse. Can you see this? They did something to this basil, but it's pretty good. It's sweeter than a normal compresse because there's not only tomatoes, there's also a tomato jam. The burrata is very good. It's fresh. Little popping balls of uh, balsamic. So if you like caprese, I think you'll enjoy. We have kadu rib bites with a sweet and sticky glaze and some slaw. Yum. Rib time. Ooh. Ooh. These are good. They're sweet and spicy. Not really spicy. They're sweet and meaty. Sweet and smoky. They're not super like fall off the bone like other ribs I've had, but they're good meat. Moist, delicious. I would eat more of those. And a blue focaccia and sausage takeaway with red fruit jam and an aioli. And this looks like a space hot dog. All right, space hot dog. Why mustard? I'm never eating. It's fine. It tastes more like a sausage than a hot dog. So it's not as good as a Ronto wrap, but it's like a sausage and a bread with mustard. This is a plant-based chili spice cucumbers with garden. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Ooh. Cucumbers are adventurous in space. They're just lightly seasoned. A little bit of heat from that chili. There's something nice and fresh and bright to liven up kind of the heavier food. But whoa, they've got a kick. There's a sweet tuber with spicy matu curry. This tastes like a granola, like a Nature Valley granola bar dipped in like squash soup. And it's like sweet and savory, and I'm, it's not working for me. There's also a tamarind glazed burro fish with some vegetables, kale, chickpea curry. Fish time. I took a too big a bite, because I don't even like fish. Unlike yesterday's fish, which pleasantly surprised me because it didn't have a super fishy taste, and it was like just like nice and flaky, this has an incredibly fishy taste, which I'm not saying is bad, I'm just saying it's not something I prefer. But if you like seafood, 
it's cooked nicely and I like the little chickpeas and the braised kale and everything that's with it, but for me, it's just too fishy. Today's daily sweet bread, brown butter cookies, AKA chocolate chip cookies. They're the same ones from dinner last night. They're crunchy chocolate chip cookies. So simple, but delicious. I wish they were a little chewier, which is why I like the crinkle cookies more though. It's a salted caramel chocolate cake and it looks like it's got a little matcha powder on there. So I'm excited about this one because it, it's cutting more like a, a brownie than a cake and then it's supposed to have a salted caramel frosting on there. Yes, space dessert. This is, pay attention. It's a really thick, I call it a brownie more than a cake. It's a really thick, rich chocolate cake. It's got a nice light caramel frosting on there. The matcha is really just for decoration. I'm not a huge matcha fan and I'm not really picking up on it. It's just a nice little rich cake bite. So this is my dessert. Uh, besides the cookies, this is the best one I've had. Another dessert here, this is the cream of yogan dessert, which that's what we had last night was a yogan dessert, but it had passion fruit in there, but it looks like maybe it's just a smaller version of last night's dessert with some different accompaniments. Let's see. The mousse tastes the same, but now it's only like a chocolate little cakey piece and the little whipped next to it. Oh, that's nice, that citrusy, like a little whipped, almost meringue flavor, but, and I like the dried raspberries on top. I actually like this presentation more than I did last night, probably because it's smaller, and the passion fruit isn't as prominent because you've got the chocolate, you've got the citrusy little whipped there. I still am not a fan of the mousse-based desserts, that's just my preference, so I'm always gonna like the cookies more. Next up, trying the seared tofu. It's got some little couscous under there. It's got a nice creamy looking aioli. So let's get into it. That is a burst of flavor. Mm, it's really good. It's very citrusy and fresh. The tofu is cooked really well. It's a, got a little bit of spice and heat to it, but nothing overwhelming. I like the crispiness of that like chip situation going on. Yeah, as a, as a vegetarian, no meat dish, this is very good. After a very eventful day, we are now headed to dinner. The theme is taste around the galaxy. So each course is gonna be inspired by the ingredients you'd find on different planets. And it's really nice because the chefs come out and explain each course and uh, the mood lighting changes around the restaurant as well as the music as you taste your way through different environments, flavors, colors, and more. The blue shrimp is here and I'm very scared. This is similar to like a space charcuterie board, I guess. And the pima cheese is like a whipped pimento cheese. So I'm gonna get a little of that and the tomato to start. And there's a variety of breads as well. The red fruit spread's really good, which is tomato. It has a little bit of spice, a little kick to it. The pimento cheese tastes like a whisper of pimento cheese because it's whipped. I love pimento cheese. I'm from Southern, I eat it a lot. And it's losing a lot of the flavor because it's whipped, but it's good all together. It just, I wish it tasted more like pimento cheese. It with the tomato is still very good. I'm also trying an appetizer off the Youngling menu tonight. Now this is available both nights. And again, adults, you can order off the kids meal. Kids, you can order off the parents meal um, and you can mix and match. While the Younglings have a lot of classic things like fruit salad and grilled chicken and pizzas, they also have a few more unique items. And these are veggie spring rolls. They come with a sweet and sour sauce, but as you can see, they're just looks like cucumber, carrot, maybe a little cabbage. Bold move for kids to just give them a spring roll full of vegetables, but let's see how it is. Okay, adults, order this. It's obviously super simple. It's literally just cucumber, carrot, cabbage, and red peppers wrapped in a like clear sprinkle wrapper with sweet and sour sauce to dip it into, but it's really crunchy. It's a nice bright bite of something refreshing and vegetables um, in between all the heavy food you're eating. Again, available both nights. It's a perfect little nosh. I say delish. And kids, you might like it too, so try it, because I said so. Here it is, folks. The moment you've all been waiting for. Blue shrimp. It's an ice Felician shrimp cocktail. It's made blue with butterfly pea flower tea, naturally. It's got pickled mushrooms, ocean weed, cocktail sauce, and it's time. As a disclaimer, I don't like shrimp colored shrimp cocktail. So I doubt I like blue colored shrimp cocktail, but I'm gonna try it nonetheless. For Wani, cause it's from her planet. Okay, okay, okay. The first time I ate blue shrimp, I just ate the whole shrimp and I didn't have any of the accoutrement. Didn't love it. I still don't love it, but I didn't expect to love shrimp cocktail cause I don't like it anyway. But with the pickled vegetables, with the seaweed salad, with the cocktail sauce, I like it a lot more. It's less, fish food tasting, which is what I think your cocktail tastes like, and it's more of a, a concert in your mouth. So try it, 
don't knock it till you try it. If you like shrimp cocktail, it literally just tastes like shrimp cocktail. Megan's eating like five on the other side of the camera. So. <laughs> the main course is here. It is from Chewy's Planet of Kashyyyk. We will start here with the braised bantha short rib. So it's a beef short rib. It's got a fig demi-glaze, a tuber potato, turmeric puree, and then some nightshade flora. It's got a lovely sauce you can pour on it there. And then on the bantha, there's a little extra of the, I believe this is the glaze. We're gonna dump that on, oh yeah. Those are very good short ribs. The demi-glaze on there with the fig is awesome. You can definitely taste the sweetness from that. And then it's combined with this really creamy, delicious mashed potato blend. Here is the seared kashyyyk white fish. It's got green pod puree, jeca seed, corn seed relish, and a yellow fruit buttercream. All right, let's start with the fish. And it's got this buttercream sauce I'm pouring on there, yum. It smelled pretty pungently fishy, which I thought meant I wouldn't like it, but I actually do. It's nice and light and mild. That buttercream sauce on there is really nice. And the corn succotash uh, with the peas and everything on there is really good as well. So lots of light flavor, light flaky fish. I think Chewbacca would enjoy it. Into the seafood. Now to the chicken. And then they don't automatically bring this out, but it says available upon request, tip yip chicken. Um, with an herbed porridge, roasted flora, and red onion vinaigrette. So I did request so we could try that one as well. I expected the chicken to be kind of like a whatever dish since it's not even brought to you automatically. But the chicken's cooked perfectly, nice little crispy skin on the outside. And there's a really nice citrus like burst creaminess in the uh, sauce that came with it and then the grain that's on the side it's very good so while I do think the other two are definitely more adventurous and they clearly want to showcase the other two if you do just want chicken it's a very good and elevated chicken dish I do think I like the steak from night one more but all three of these entrees were very good and don't forget you can also always order cheeseburger pods on the kids menu my favorite food in the galaxy, well, the other galaxy, different space, there are literally cheeseburger pods and they brought me one because it's like cruise style and you can have as much as you want. And oh my gosh, I cannot believe I found cheeseburger pods on the Star Cruiser. Our final course this evening is the Shen Drillin Air Cake. And as you can see, it's glittery and in the shape of the CSL logo. It's a chocolate cream of yogan fruit and a teratique fruit jelly. And before they brought it out, they actually sprayed senses around so that you could smell the yogurt. Let's get into it. Oh, it's blue in there. That's nice. The cake part is really nice. It's a nice, rich chocolate cake. I don't love the yogurt flavor in general, so I, that's kind of throwing me, but I like the chocolate bar on top as well. It's really creamy. This is probably one of the better desserts. I definitely like it more than the mousse dessert we had last night. And also tonight, different milk and cookies. So I asked for green milk tonight, um, but as you can see, it's the crinkle cookies, but these are the not ube ones, just the plain sugar cookies. And they're so cute. Dinner number two went swimmingly. It was delicious. I love the vibe of the taste around the galaxy. The first order did come in and say the ship was now under their control, which does put a damper on things at times, but it was very lovely. My favorite course was not the shrimp. No, I really liked the dessert, this one, with those cookies. These are my favorite cookies on board. I really like the Bantha, and I just like the whole presentation of it being the taste around the galaxy. We are doing our final thing, which is sweets and treats. It's a little dessert party. Oh my gosh, no way. They've got the butter blue grains. Oh my gosh. This is the best part of the galaxy. This is the best part of the trip. Once again, the party was too rocking for me to film this easily um, because Wani and Sandar were crushing it on the mic and I didn't want to interrupt them. Also, I was busy dancing. But let's take a look at what you can get at the Sweets and Treats Dessert Buffet. First up, the sweet cookies. These were just a variety of the cookies that they had throughout the ship. My favorite, again, were those purple crinkle ones. Those were an ube crinkle cookie. They also had a sugar cookie, a chocolate chip cookie, a plain crinkle cookie. Can't go wrong with cookies. But again, my favorite was that purple one. It was the most unique. There was also also long fruit choco sweet cake. That's basically just a chocolate chip muffin, so nothing too exciting. There was also a minted fruit salad, which was nice to class up just a plain fruit salad with some fresh mint, which was very enjoyable. There was a sweet ube cream, which was basically just whipped cream enhanced with ube, so it made it really fluffy and light and decadent. It was really delicious on its own, but pro tip for my friend at Disney Food Blog, get two of the cookies and make yourself a 
whoopie pie sandwich. They also had ice cream mochi. It was strawberry, which is red berry. If you've had mochi before, it's like a soft, chewy outer with ice cream style on the inside. It's a Japanese dessert. If you like it, very exciting. There was also a blackberry ice, which was just sorbet. The salted caramel chocolate cake from lunch the other day returned, as well as the cream of yogin. But of course, the most exciting and important thing to mention at the Sweets and Treats dessert party, this is the one and only appearance aboard the Star Cruiser of my beloved cat. Cat Sackas Kettle Outpost Mix. They also have the plain butter grains, but for me, the real champion, the real star is the fact that we finally get my sweet and spicy popcorn aboard the ship. And believe me when I say I ate three bags of it. Also, don't forget blue milk and green milk are on tap again. So if you'd like to go nuts and go for the swirl, I actually recommend it. But the sweets and treats dessert party is a fun way to close out your final night on the ship. Again, get as much Cat Sackas as you'd like because it's the real star of the ship. It's time for bedtime snacks part two, the sequel, if you will. These were the new snacks on the snack bar buffet today. They still had some of the same cookies and the Rice Krispie Treat and things, but these were the new unusual ones. So this is called a Rice Krispie Asteroid Ball, and it's like got Cocoa Krispies on the outside. Hmm, that's really good. It definitely tastes like a cake pop or a really good moist brownie with Cocoa Krispies on the outside. So that's a good one. That's probably the best thing off the snack bar so far. And if you don't believe me, just ask my friend AJ from Disney Food Blog. I feel like she ate 10 of them. She kept, just kept like every time she'd walk by, she'd put one in her bag. And they were one of her favorite things the whole cruise. So those are definitely good if you like chocolate. Sweet and sour dried fruit. So I feel like it's going to be like candy, but like more natural than gummy candy. So let's try it. Mmm. Okay, these are awesome. Yeah, it's like sour candy, but on dried fruit. So it's not, it's still gummy and it still tastes like gummy candy, but it's a little bit more natural looking because it's just dried fruit, cranberries, oranges, raisins. So that's really fun. If you like like Sour Patch Kids, give that a whirl. And with that, good night. I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast. Good morning. We are headed to our final breakfast, the Crown of Corellia. And make sure you don't miss breakfast day two because it's different than breakfast day one. This looks great. A crispy tuber waffle. So it's like a giant waffle fry basically with a cheddar egg bite, herb butter sauce, and bacon. Ooh. That egg is good. The, the creamy herb sauce on top is... It's kind of the consistency of like a hollandaise. Like it feels like it's definitely mayonnaise. Eggy consistency. This is great. This is basically the waffle fry I had at dinner last night. And then just a little bit of bacon. Oh, very good smoky bacon. And it's like cross hatched, which is cool. This is a really good choice if you are a pickier eater um, and you don't want the kids version of this. This is like a very simple breakfast, but presented with fun. There is a breakfast meat pie pizza. One thing's for sure, and that's that they know how to do pizza in space. And that includes breakfast pizza. I figured out why I like space pizza. Um, and that's one, the crust is obviously far superior to a lot of earth pizza like at Pizza Rizzo. But second, they don't use the weak red sauce at, I haven't seen it on any pizzas. Like this is like a, a cheesy buttery white sauce on this one. Another one had like a pesto sauce on it, so. Base pizza's been A plus every variety, every flavor. This is the plant-based baboti. You know I love the baboti like at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Um, it's usually made with some kind of ground meat and it looks like it's made with ground plant-based meat and has some mushrooms and tomatoes uh, relish on top. So it's no secret that I'm not the biggest fan of plant-based meat and egg substitutes and uh, this is no exception. There were amazing plant-based offerings out throughout the journey. This is just not one for me. The What's supposed to be the meat, because normally baboti is like ground turkey or ground beef or some other kind of ground meat, is, um, I, I want to say, nuts. And it's it's got good flavor, but for me, the texture is completely wrong um, with both the egg and the, and the fake meat. So this one's not for me. But if you're a plant-based eater, you might love this one. The flavor is really good. Actually, it has a good amount of spice because it is a spice baboti dish. The relish is really good with the creamy tomato. It's just not something I would choose to eat again since there are real eggs and sausage. And the last new thing on the buffet this morning is the meteor egg, which as you can see is like a soft boiled egg with sausage and it's fried. And this looks amazing. I did not love my scotch egg experience in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, but let's see if space scotch eggs beat them. I feel like they will. Look how yummy and gooey that looks. Oh. What? That was amazing. That was for sure the best breakfast item. It is 
creamy. Okay, you have to like a good runny egg, and I love a runny, gooey egg. There's a really nice creamy sauce on there. It's it's the meat is smoky and marinated, and it's got that little bit of kind of heat that you expect from breakfast sausage, but the batter almost tastes like what they batter like a funnel cake with. It has a slight sweetness to it. It is phenomenal. Do not sleep on the scotch egg, the meteor egg on breakfast number two. All right, the crew was amazing. We asked what kind of sauce it was. They said a turmeric aioli. I mean, this is blowing my mind because I am loving it. Breakfast is great. And, and welcome to honorable mentions. Moe has eaten 96 food items aboard the Galactic Star Cruiser. Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. I see creepy. I will cover the rest. You can sit at the captain's table for an extra $30 per person. This exclusive menu features items such as the Red Fruit Pillar and Mr. Shooter. Keep in mind that there are more items available for all your dietary needs, as well as basic kids' choices and of food items like scrambled eggs at breakfast. There really are over 100 choices available to you. Make sure to subscribe to allhouse.net. Good journey, and may the Force be with you. So that wraps up our foodie guide to the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. Over 100 different items reviewed. There's so much to eat on this ship, and honestly, the food is one of the things that surprised me the most. I had a lot of dishes that I can't wait to eat again, except for I'm going to have to because I don't know when I'm going to spend the money to come back on the Star Cruiser again. But I can tell you, it's not never. I'm definitely going to be back at some point. Let's go over some of my best of the Star Cruiser. First of all, the meteor egg at the last breakfast is absolutely delicious. All the pizzas were phenomenal. I love that pork and cheese takeaway at breakfast day one, as well as that fire grilled cheese and tomato soup. The grilled cheese and tomato soup bubble waffle high on my list. The steak night one, the bao buns night one, as well as my beloved cheeseburger bao bun I found. Uh, as far as cocktails go, I really like that fiery but safari and the silver sea martini. There's a lot of variety. There's a lot of great eats here on the Star Cruiser. And I think if you do choose to go on this journey, the food will not disappoint you. Until next time, friends, it's been out of this world. Now go watch my first review of the Star Cruiser. Bye!